Like America, it was called the land of possibilities. Kenya, with my candidature, and with um, winning this election, the child of every Kenyan can know that they can live their dreams and actualize their dreams, irrespective of whatever background they come from. And we are elevating Kenya to the next level, that ethnicity cannot be a barrier. Your social status cannot be a barrier. The religion you profess cannot be a barrier. That's all my candidature speaks to. And when I uh, ran for this office, there are many people who thought you needed a name recognition, a brand, a big family to come from, a big uh, community to come from. But with my candidature, the child of any Kenyan, small community, big community, irrespective of their social status, can actually um, uh, journey to success and journey to the pinnacle of any success because it is possible and the people of Kenya have made a decision that any Kenyan can be the best they can as so long as they work hard and they work at it. You say that, you know, you've, you've reached out, your op opponent, the former prime minister, you know, has, has congratulated you. But your own boss, the outgoing president, Kenyatta, to whom you were deputy, supported your opponent. He didn't support you during this campaign. And as so far, we don't know whether he's actually congratulated you or not. Has he, President Kenyatta? You know, when I decided to support President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta for 10 years... I did not give him conditions on him to support me. And he's an adult, and he can choose and make decisions mm -hmm. like all adults on who to choose. And I appreciated when he decided to support somebody else. I, I did not take offense, although I had supported him in the past. I have won the election. That is what is important. Did he congratulate you? That's what I want to know. Anybody whether they supported me or not. Uh, unfortunately, President uh, Kenyatta has not seen it fit to congratulate me, but I think that's fine. I mean, maybe he's a bit um, disillusioned, or maybe he's unhappy that I defeated his candidate, but that is the nature of politics. Now, in a few days, you're going to be inaugurated and you will take office. It's been a pretty bitter, divisive and, in fact, contested uh, campaign and result. It did go down to the Supreme Court. And you've now been congratulated for everybody abiding by the Supreme Court decision and because there was no violence. How do you take that, the fact that Kenya has become so known for violence around presidential elections, that this is somewhat of a pleasant surprise? I think it speaks to the heart of the maturity of uh, the democracy of our country. No citizen, no leader wants their country to be famous for violence. And as the people of Kenya, we have raised the standard, I think, in our continent, and we have raised the standard even for ourselves that we can go to an election, we can decide who our leaders are, and the next day we can go back to work. That is the standard we have raised for ourselves as the people of Kenya. I am very proud of it, and many, many, if not all Kenyans, are very proud of it. And what happened in the past was a slip, and we have gained our balance, and I am very confident going into the future the next election will be better than the one we had this year. So, again, it's, it's very good to hear you say that because the last one in which you said there were challenges and, and mishaps and you called it a slip, what happened in 2007, 2008, you know, more than 1,000 people were killed. So it, it was a pretty big disaster. I want to talk to you about a specific, you know, human rights 
situation in parts of Africa and including in your own country. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I want to know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law. We have Kenyan constitution. We have our tradition. We have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. So before I ask you to flesh that out and what exactly does it mean, I want to play you what President Kenyatta said to me about this issue. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it's, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. So he's basically saying homosexuality is not agreeable. You've just said that you're kind of trying to thread the needle, that the law says one thing, but you respect everybody's rights. Will a Ruto administration crack down, like many other leaders in Africa, on the homosexual LGBTQ community? Or will you allow them their human rights and their civil rights? I think on that subject, President Kenyatta was spot on. We do not want to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When, the people of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya...